Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Fix This House Backyard Edition. On today's episode, we're gonna be replacing this old rotten deck into a brand new composite one. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider pressing that subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. As you can see, this deck has seen better days. It has gone through many storms and it has just been rotting out in and out. So we're still going to maintain, probably we're going to go a little bit over um, the length of the house. I'm going to start on this edge right here and then we're going to go a little bit over to the right so we can stay clear from this um, downspout. So this is the material we'll be replacing the decking with. Again, we're just gonna go with the direction of the old boards. This is lifetime actually. You don't need to stain this material. It's kind of like plasticky, but it's vinyl. Um, so this ranges up to 12 feet. So this existing deck is about eight feet long. Um, we're going to extend this to the length of the board which is 12 feet which you can see across the flower bed right here So now that we got all the debris and all the old decking off the area that we're going to set our new deck, we are going to start putting down the base for the new decking. Now we're going to flush this with the concrete slab that you see right there and we're going to be using our 12 by 12 pavers. Now we couldn't f find or anywhere that's available for tw uh, uh, 12 feet 4 by 4 pressure treated wood. So what we're using is a 8 um, eight footer four by four and we're just going to extend it later on which I'll show you in a bit so we are going to be using a 16 foot uh, joist this one is a two by six that we, we just got from Home Depot again all the materials on this video I'll leave it on the description down below um, before we set everything down you want to make sure that you set the uh, pavers on the right start you're gonna have to use this um this chart right here for a reference we're gonna be putting down gravel base for the bottom bedding sand and then you can finally put down the paver now this will um, allow drainage and prevent it from shifting along from any type of rain or weather that you might have so make sure that you have this um, combination like what i have here on this chart just follow it and you won't go um, wrong we're just pretty much just testing everything out we're just moving out everything making sure that everything is nice and aligned and again we are short on this base so we're gonna have to extend it four feet because this uh, four by four is uh, eight foot now we're going to be connecting it with the galvanized mending plate just like what you see there to make it a total of 12 feet length so that four by four pressure treated wood is attached by a mending plate just like you see here now that we have everything nice and uh, settled out and planned we are taking those out and we're going to be covering this with a uh, weed mat now the weed mat again i'll leave it in the description below all the tools that i used and all the materials we're laying this just to prevent it from so we don't have any weeds growing out in the future or coming out. Now I highly recommend you use a weed mat because if you don't like what you saw in the very beginning of this video my old uh, rotted deck you saw all those plants coming out because there was no weed mat underneath there. Once you got that done I like to place that weed mat also over the pavers and now we can um, just pretty much dry fit everything like what you see here there you go our 12 4 by 4 wood and our six, uh, 2 by 6 16 foot joist. Now we're going to mark out where we're going to be putting it, the shelving brackets. Now we're going to be making it uh, 16 inch centers just like what you see on your ceilings. These shelving brackets will help hold the joist together. Now we are hammering down galvanized shelving brackets. These will hold the joist in place together. Make sure they are aligned on each one of the the base so that they are nice and aligned as you can see here they are 
16 inch centers just like what you see on your ceiling and they are held down by um, nails again very simple again here you go two-man way you can again you can some of the wood here are not straight so it does it really doesn't matter it's gonna be just for your base if it's not straight then it's not straight just use what you can so now we are placing our 2x6 16 foot joists on top of those shelving brackets once they are aligned you can nail them down with your nails or your screws make sure that those are weatherproof screws or nails and they can withstand any type of weather these are 16 foot uh, joists now carefully just make sure that they are nice and straight continually using your level now so to make sure that your deck is nice and square um, have that 90 degree angle make sure that you measure one end of the deck to the other end of the deck and that measurement should equal to this end of the deck to the other end of the deck so if it's 160 inches for example the other end should be 160 inches as well now this is completely optional you can use weather deck tape just like what you see here this is pressure treated wood that i'm using so i'm not going to be using them but if, if you want it to last longer it's totally up to you it's not necessary depending on your code but i'll leave it on the link down below if you want to use this deck weather tape Sixteen inch centers, and then we have the weed control felt paper installed. These four by fours are supported and are sitting onto the pavers. And then, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put a framing around here, put a frame there, and onto the other side. So I put a little extender here. Here's that paver that's sitting. So if we measure from end to end, this is measuring to about 143, which is perfect because my composite um, boards are 12 over 12 feet long. The material that I'm using are the Trex composite boards right here. And these composite boards measure up to 145 inches, which is over 12 feet. And they're going to lay perpendicular all the way here. So after we put the framing on the edges, then we're going to go and put start laying these composite boards over. So I also want to mention that this weed control mat that I placed down is tied down and stapled down with these staples. Um, these are special staples made for this material. Again, this will be on the link down below. Now that this material that I'm using is Trex Dex. The, this is Trex from, uh, I got this from Home Depot. I'll leave all this in the description down below, but you can get this material at Home Depot in two different colors. And you can also get these fasteners, universal fasteners from Home Depot as well. And uh, this um, box wasn't enough. It was only for, made for 50 square feet. So I had to get a bigger um container with that will cover 200 square feet now this has everything that you need to install this trex decks and you can also find all this in home depot as well i'll leave it on the description down below it comes with all the screws hardwares and also the ending uh, brackets like what you see here this is perfect for any uh perfect end and I'm gonna be using my square just to make sure it's nice and aligned before I screw it down. So what's great about this tool kit is that it comes with the tool that you need to attach to your driver so that you can get these screws in because it is a special tool to get these on. This is the hardware that is you're gonna be using to attach this. You're gonna be screwing this uh, screw on an angle just like what you see there. And you're going to go all the way through till it's nice and secured. And everything else is pretty much self-explanatory. You're just going to go and um, place it on just like a puzzle piece. Everything's just so easy to do. Once you get one piece, the other one just snaps in place just like that. Very easy. Now I'm just going to do a quick time lapse on a few of these boards. So sometimes these clips do point down a little bit. So you're going to be using your flathead or your Phillips screwdriver and just pry this up a little bit up so that it can go through the groove on each one of your composite deck. 
Just a little pull like that and you should be fine. That's why we start from this end, then do the other end, and then you can push this composite board because this composite board is very flexible and you can push it in and make it look straight. If you started from this end and you kept going, um, it's going to get harder for you to get that straight. So that's one tip and trick when working with composite boarding because these boards have already been used. That's why they've already shifted and they've been sitting for a while outside my home. So yeah, if you're working with it, but if you had brand new ones, then it'll be a lot easier to work with. You can use these end clips if they are flush with the ends right here but I don't want to cut it with the saw it'll look too um, messy that way I want to make it look clean and continuous so I'll just keep this a floating edge so what I did was I actually screwed it onto there and you can barely see it from far away I know that might not be the correct way but hey you gotta you gotta adapt and customize it some way or somehow so I'm gonna do it per each uh, joist but you can do it this way you can do it your way this my way and I choose to keep it like that from far away you can barely even see it, it looks like a, just a tiny little nick and yeah I'm not gonna lose sleep over it cool whole run is done and the end piece is finally complete and we're gonna be attaching a 2x4 just so that we can have uh, screws to, to attach our chalk line so I'm going to be placing the chalk line from one end to the other. That's why it's um, good to always have excess. Don't do this exactly 12 feet. So once you get that chalk line down, use your circular saw and just run through it carefully. Don't go too fast. Take your time because you don't want to go and make this crooked because it will have um, a very obvious crooked line. If So now that you can see that everything is nice and straight cut the cut was perfect again this is going to be the edges are going to be covered with another composite decking material uh, which i'll show you in a bit after i show you this clean cut that i just made by the uh, circular saw we're going to cover it now with another piece of uh, composite decking again there's another piece here that trex decks offered that you can do for end pieces but I'm just using a regular, the regular pieces that's what's left and I'm going to be screwing it with, um, with the necessary hardware that you use for the outside. Again, um, I'm not, I didn't end up buying the end pieces for this particular deck. I'm just saving what material that I already use. But if you want, you can go find that material for the end pieces and for the framing for this deck. But I think it overall turned out well. Again, if you found this video super helpful, please hit that big thumbs up on this video. Please subscribe and press that notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIY's how-to videos and product reviews that I do within this channel. So this deck did take about two and a half days to, to do because in between times I had a work and other things to do but overall i think it turned out real well you can see that the outcome is nice and clean this is a great diy for those who are just want a clean simple deck nothing too fancy a floating deck that you can just sit and relax on and just pretty much you know just chill and have it right there on your backyard and it's nice and clean it's weatherproof it is lifetime it's composite, it's vinyl, you don't need to stain it. Again, all this material I'll leave in the description below and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.